Andrew Little, the Sheep King of Idaho. Andrew Little came from Scotland to Idaho. He was an immigrant. He came to Idaho to get a better life. What kinds of conflicts and compromises did he have in his life? Andrew Little was born in Scotland in 1870. He had seven brothers and two sisters. When they were old enough, their parents sent them away because they did not have enough money for them. They sent them away and to find their new fortune. He got to Idaho. He had two dollars left and two sheep dogs. He sold his dog, Katie, to an old sheep herder. Then he worked at a sheep camp. After he worked for a year, his boss offered to sell Andy his own sheep. Andy paced in front of a bank so long they thought he was a bank robber. He decided to start his own herd. Andy knew what to do with his sheep. Sheep were sheared with tools like this. Boys attached a bag to this wood structure. Then they would squish the wool to pack it down. A bag of fleece to weigh up to 3,000 pounds. Sheep herding was not easy. Predators would try to eat the sheep. In some places, sheep herders and cattle ranchers fought over land and water. Andy had a gun to keep him and his sheep safe. Andy did well in sheep farming. He was able to build the little mansion. You can still see it today, but it is privately owned. Andy had gotten married to Agnes Bell, and they had five children together. His wife and daughters could get these nice new dresses. He could afford to hire other sheep herders. Many of them were Basque people from Spain. They lived in a sheep camp like this one. Andy was fair but a strict boss. Sometimes the bass sheep herders were involved with conflicts over land. In this case, a man named Ignacio was accused of trespassing and shot. I think maybe bass people were not respected back then because the newspaper writer said the bass instead of Ignacio. The bass sheep brought food and music to Idaho. We still enjoy these traditions today. Big circle! In, two, three, four, back, two, three, and four. In, two, three, four, back, two, three, four. him with his conflicts in his job. His daughter made this coyote gun. Once you light it, the fire slowly burns the wick. A weight drops onto black powder. It makes a loud noise that scares off the coyotes. In some places, sheep herders and cattle ranchers did not get along. Andy did not have this problem. Maybe because he compromised and bought cattle too. The little cattle company is still in business today. Sometimes, Andy would have conflicts with his neighbors. They would argue about their sheep grazing on each other's land. They would also argue about water, like who got the irrigation for their animals. They did not get into physical fights, but they fought a lot in court. The court would decide who would win. Sometimes one neighbor would have to pay another neighbor money. Andy's relatives said Andy was ready to fight for what was his. He even took one of his cases from Jarron County to the Supreme Court. But in the end, the court agreed that he would lose the case. And he had to compromise because he can't always win. In 1934, the Taylor Grazing Act meant that there was less grazing grounds. Also, many people didn't want to eat sheep mutton anymore. The number of sheep in Idaho dropped from 3 million to 250,000. Andy was a boy. Shepherds often couldn't go to church. When a shepherd died, he was buried with wool in his hand, so God wouldn't know why he had missed church. By the time Andy died in 1941, that tradition wasn't used. Instead, truckloads of flowers filled the house. Andy had solved many conflicts in his life. Sheep herding still goes on in Idaho today. Many people enjoy learning about sheep of the trailing of the sheep in Sun Valley every year.